Hello there, my purest of battle brothers, and welcome to the start of a brand new series of lore on my channel. This one is a topic that many of you have already requested multiple times, so I have finally decided to jump on the bandwagon. This topic is none other than the mysterious, secretive, and rather necessary Grey Knights, aka the Chamber Militant of the Inquisition's Ordo Malleus. Today's episode is just gonna be an introductory video of sorts, we're gonna talk about who they are in general, and a little bit about their founding. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us see who these fellows are, shall we? A light against darkness, the Grey Knights stand against the greatest threat mankind has ever faced. They are the champions of reason, order and righteousness, holding back demons and the scions of the Dark Gods. They are the Imperium's mightiest weapon against the warp, superhuman space marine psychers, and its single enduring hope for salvation. There is no greater threat to the galaxy than the denizens of the warp and the ruinous powers that rule them. Demons and gods, these supernatural horrors tear at the veil between the realm of chaos and reality, hungry for the souls of men and the ruin of worlds. If left unchecked and unopposed, demons would claim the universe as their own pulling down the pillars of creation and fashioning a never-ending nightmare where once the galaxy had been. Demons are unlike any other foe the Imperium faces, and against this supernatural horror, men can find themselves powerless. The Emperor's armies are vast and numerous, from the void-born fleets of the Imperial Navy and the endless ranks of the Imperial Guard to the superhuman space marines and the powerful Titan legions. Mortal foes cannot stand against the Imperium when it is roused to war, but the demon is not a mortal enemy. History has proven that all men can be corrupted, and even the mighty space marine chapters are not immune to the unholy temptations of the Dark Gods. In his infinite wisdom, the Emperor foresaw that even should he prevail against Horus, the threat of chaos would remain. He knew that of all the Imperium's many enemies, the demonic was the greatest threat, and so he created a brotherhood of incorruptible warriors to fight only demons. These were the Grey Knights, and they would stand as the Emperor's ultimate weapon against the gods of chaos. The Grey Knights are arguably the most mysterious of all the Imperium's warriors. Their creation was the culmination of a plan conceived in the dying days of the Horus Heresy, hidden from even the Emperor's armies, lest it be uncovered by his foes. Even now, few in the Imperium know of their existence, and those that do possess only fragments of the truth. Legends and myths surround the Grey Knights, and those tales told about them are filled with broad misconceptions and fanciful lies. The vast hordes of humanity know nothing of the Grey Knights, and a handful of citizens that have heard their name assume them to be just an arm of the Inquisition, or a chapter of the mythical superhuman space marines. Some of the stories and fables taught by the Adeptus Ministorum hold the barest hints of the existence of the Grey Knights, but they are portrayed as silver-armored angels, ghostly manifestations of the God Emperor, or shimmering reflections of the Saints themselves, as often as not. Those soldiers who have fought alongside the Grey Knights, and retained both their lives and their minds, recall them only as Astartes of an unknown Space Marine chapter, their unique weapons and psychic powers attributed to forgotten technology and tactical doctrine. Other Space Marines know better should they see a Grey Knight in battle, but they are wise enough not to dwell long in thought about these mysterious warriors. Legend has it that the Grey Knights were founded on the order of the Emperor himself, in the final bloody days of the Horus Heresy. His greatest warriors, the Space Marines, had proven fallible to the temptations of the Dark Gods, and so the Emperor set out to create a new kind of soldier in his bid to protect humanity. This new breed of Space Marine would be stronger of will than his brothers, 
and unwavering in his loyalty to mankind, able to stand naked before the power of the warp and survive unscathed. In this time, the Emperor turned to Malkador the Sigilite, his most trusted servant and the first High Lord of Terra. Malkador was a very powerful psyker, lore keeper of the fledgling Imperium, and had stood at the Emperor's side since the time of the Unification Wars. He was tasked by the Emperor immediately after news had reached Terra of the Warmaster Horus's betrayal to gather a group of dedicated Imperial servants whose loyalty, courage and strength of mind was unquestioned. As the Emperor prepared for the final battle with Horus, Malkador was crossing the divided Imperium, searching corpse-choked battlefields and worlds drowned in blood for those that the Emperor sought. No other man save the Emperor himself could have been given such a task with any hope to complete it. However, Malkador did return to the Imperial Palace, even as Horus's forces laid siege to Terra. Only the Sigilite's psychic mastery and knowledge of the hidden ways into the palace allowed him to slip through the traitor's battle lines to reach the Emperor's side. When the Master of Mankind looked upon those Malkador had brought, he knew that there was still hope for humanity. Twelve men in all had been gathered four noble lords and governors of the highest order, complemented by eight space marines. Those eight selected space marines all possessed paranormal skill as psychas, that had been kept dormant as required by the edicts of Nikea. These warriors willingly cast aside their former loyalty to their given space marine legions and primarchs, either because of the corruption of these legions by chaos, or because they realized that loyalty to the Emperor required them to sacrifice all their former ties. That some of these battle brothers came from legions that had turned traitor proved the depth of their loyalty, for there can be no greater challenge for a space marine than to defy the word of his Primarch. After meeting with the candidates, the Emperor is believed to have replied, Malkador, you have judged well. The Grey Knights were created alongside what became the Inquisition, and their goals were intertwined. They would be the staunch allies of this new organization, fashioned in the image of the Space Marine chapters. Their battle brothers augmented by the Emperor's own advanced science. Blessed with both superhuman physiology and the most advanced Imperial weapons, the Grey Knights would be the elite of the elite of the Adeptus Astartes. However, it would not be enough of them to merely be strong of body and skilled in war, though in this they would surpass every other space marine. To fight the demon, the Grey Knights would need to be pure of heart as well, with an unblemished soul in which the corruption of the warp could find no purchase. In Malkador's absence, the Emperor had prepared a concealed fortress monastery on the moon of Titan. Hidden under layers of rock and shrouded by powerful technologies, the structure had eluded discovery by the traitors. Their armies focused on Terra, where the fate of the Imperium was unfolding. After departing the Emperor's palace, Malkador's charges parted ways. The four human lords created the framework of the Inquisition, charged with rooting out heresy from within the Imperium. Malkador took the eight space marines to the fortress where he set about laying the foundations of a new order of space marines. Everything had been prepared for the coming of the Sigilite and the Battle Brothers. An army of servitors maintaining the fortress, while cryovolts hidden at its core contained vast stocks of Jainseid. Hundreds of thousands of recruits had also been gathered from the worlds of the Imperium. These would become the raw material that Malkador would fashion into the Grey Knight Space Marines. The servants of Malkador had chosen each of these recruits carefully, the recruits' minds deeply probed to see if they bore even the slightest hint of chaotic corruption. They were also chosen for their latent psychic gifts, so that once human flesh was implanted with Space Marine Gene Seed, they would grow into potent psychas with a unique control over their abilities. To find so many suitable specimens, the servants of Malkador had searched an innumerable number of planets of the Imperium, 
taking aspirants from the seed worlds of the Loyalist legions, as well as from the ranks of the Imperial Army. Some were even taken from primitive worlds newly restored by the Imperium. Their hardy people, ignorant of the war in the sky that had brought them to Titan, but willing to do what the air tags gods demanded. For those first days, Malkador guided the Eight in the formation of the Grey Knights, overseeing the awakening of the Great Citadel and its new chapter. However, events were coming to a close on Terra, and as the traitor armies gathered for a final blow against the Imperial Palace, Malkador was summoned back to the Emperor's side. Before he departed though, the Sigilite elected Janus from among the eight space marines to continue the work he had begun. So it was that Janus became the first Supreme Grand Master of the Grey Knights. Malkador's final act on Titan was to weave a complex psychic ward about the moon, to shield it from the mayhem raging across the galaxy. Whereas before the Sigilite's artifice had merely hidden the fortress from detection, it now concealed an entire planet. Wrapping Titan in a bubble of reality, Malkador sent it into the warp, where it would ride out the final battle for the Imperium. For many years, Titan remained absent from the galaxy. While the Emperor was interned in the Golden Throne, and the traitors fled to the Eye of Terror, the Grey Knights chapter grew within the warp. As the Loyalist Space Marine Legions hunted down the survivors of Horus' army, the Grey Knights trained and perfected their physical and psychic skill. Finally, many years after the end of the Horus Heresy, as the Loyalist Space Marine Legions were dividing themselves into chapters, Titan returned, just as planned. However, time is subjective inside the warp, and where only standard years had passed in real space, whole decades had slipped away in the fortress monastery of the Grey Knights. Eight Space Marines and hundreds of thousands of raw recruits had entered the warp, and a full 1,000 Grey Knights came out. In Malkador's stead, Janus had created the formidable weapon dreamed of by the Emperor, and now it stood ready to begin its righteous task. By this time, the human lords gathered by the Sigilite were masters of the Inquisition, and had been long awaiting the return of Titan. With great care and utmost secrecy, the Inquisitor Lords added the Grey Knights to the records of the Adeptus Terra, as the 666th chapter of Space Marines. The only organization to know of the Grey Knights' true purpose was the Inquisition. And shortly after the return of Titan, the Lords of the Inquisition traveled to the Moon, where they met with Supreme Grandmaster Janus. What transpired between these great lords is recorded in the annals of the chapter, the sacred words of Janus and the Inquisitor lords marked out in ancient ink, telling of the very first secret pact between the Inquisition and the Grey Knights. In the first centuries after their official return, the chapter was called upon many times by the Inquisition. In the wake of the Horus heresy, the Imperium still burned with war, and was plagued by demonic incursions. On the twin moons of Irm, silver-armored angels were held responsible for the destruction of the Ithican demon Cruciform. Though none of the local citizens survived, they left behind crude drawings on the walls of their refuge caves, depicting men clad in silver armor, impaling twisting shapes of burning crimson. The Grey Knights fought their secret war wherever the threat of the Dark Gods appeared, seeking out those places where the fabric of reality grew thin, and hungry demons turned their gaze to the realm of man. This was to be the sacred duty of the Grey Knights, and their endless struggle against a foe without number or remorse. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Grey Knights for today. What are your thoughts about this famous chapter? Are they among your favorite Imperial factions? Let us know and discuss in the comments below. Now that I've started them, be assured I will return to them and cover multiple aspects of theirs in the very near future. Was this video informative or entertaining? 
In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.